What's going on, y'all, and welcome on in. So if you missed the Awaken update, guys, make sure y'all watch that. There's so much juicy stuff in that video. But in this one, let's go ahead and give our first impression cover Jacko plus the new EEs. Look how short this uh, live stream was from Mashu and Giggity. We'll just cover the new hero, Guilty Gear stuff, and then talk about the EEs. So let's go ahead and get started. Watch it together real fast. Guilty Gear fans, this is her song. There's the S3 animation. Pal Driver. What do y'all think? Not quite. I feel like the animation wasn't as good as some of the others, but um, I love Guilty Gear and I think Jacko looks great, so I'm a fan. So they go over her past, the lore. She looks really good. And this is the Strive version, guys, not any of the other Guilty Gears, of course. But it says she has a split personality, and that's why she wears the mask. So Soul, who's released, related, uh, closely related to, to uh, Jacko. In terms of, I think, the spirit they put in her. Whatever it was they put in her was his lover. All right, Jacko's a five-star fire warrior. High crit chance, high crit damage. And attack imprint team effectiveness imprint for two units. Let's go ahead and look at the skills. This first one, guys, I feel like is the one... I'm on the Twitch player, so we're going to pause it here. But the this trick-or-treat one, I think, is where a lot of players are already getting their, their brainstorming because of the chains of Chiron. Is that how you pronounce it? The chains of Chiron to the, at the start of the battle grants the chain to the ally in the back row for two turns. After an ally attacks when the target is stunned, increases combat readiness of all allies by 15%. Um, kind of similar to make Chloe's bonk. But this effect is activated after all the attacker's effects have occurred and can only be activated once every three turns. I think they're talking about the stun CR push, but the Chains of Chiron, it sounds like you only get that at the start of the battle and then it never re-procs unless this is also talking about it. Let me know what you guys think here. We'll see if they clarify, but I think they're just saying that the start of the turn, start of the battle, you get Chains for two turns and what it does is after attacking that back row unit has a 25 percent chance to stun the target for one turn and as they're going to show guys this applies to aoe attacks so people are brainstorming already belly in politis seesaw bologna who knows this is such this is a very cool mechanic um it's not going to be fun to fight against but i know a lot of y'all are brainstorming cool ways to make it super op let me know who you guys are going to plan to run it with all right so they're showing Polidus, which, by the way, her moves are AoE, both S2 and the S3. And as I can see, I'm assuming that's not on Crown. And they're showing off the Chains of Chiron, the buff. So it does work on AoE attacks, boys. And the skill enhance... Sorry, I didn't mention this part. The skill enhance will bring the 15% up to 2, 3, 4, 5, 20%. Okay. Uh, chains of Chiron cannot be dispelled. Very good. So two turns. And if you use it on you know, like Rem or Seaside Bologna who are super slow, they're going to have that buff on for a long time. And it's applied after artifact effects. So you can. it has a chance to proc Crown plus that. Now they're talking about the combat readiness. And it's applied after all, attacks from, all effects from the attacker. So it can work after the Chains of Chiron stun effect. Very cool. All right, here's the skill three. Forever Elysian Driver. Increases attacks so she gets self-attack up for two turns. Swallows them with a jack-o'-lantern. And when the enemy's defeated, she'll get an extra turn. So think aggressive comps, cleave comps. That already shines. And penetration, uh, defense pen by 50% base. Extra turn, boys. One on kill. Self-attack up. Very, very powerful. Skill three, right? Minus one turn cooldown. There'll be three turns after Mola. And you get damage. Mola's there, so... Definitely going to be favoring aggressive comps because you want to get that early kill with a self-attack up in 50% defense pen. And the fact that she has high crit or damage from her star sign, it's going to be... Depending on the... That was my other video rendering, by the way, guys, that sound. But if the multipliers aren't too low, uh, we should be able to land a kill on most squishier units, right? Because of all that self-attack up in defense pen, of course. So, throw Servant, attacks the enemy with a Servant. By the way, guys, I think the multipliers can't be that high, given the fact that she has the defense pen and attack up, but we'll see. Throw Servant, attacks the enemy with a Servant with a 30% chance to stun, right? So now we have two ways to, stun to apply stuns, both through the Chains of Chiron on the back row unit, and remember her S2 passive gets 
combat readiness when you attack a stun unit. And uh, we have this, which becomes 40% after Molagora. And Dust Attack, which is a big move in the Guilty Gear fighting games. It's the one that you can like break. You can break guard, I think, and it launches them in the air. But Soul Burn Effect, increases chance to 100%. The stun per 100% chance stun is always good. And then as you all see there, she can launch into that Dust Attack. And it gives her stealth. Let's go read that again real fast, guys, in case make sure we didn't miss anything. Oops. See real fast here. So yeah, as long as the target has any debuff, which stuns will count, um, you activate the dust attack, which does extra damage and then get grants stealth to the caster for one turn. She'll usually have this activated if we bring her in an appropriate comp, or if she activates her own stun. Uh, 40% chance, of course, but that's not that reliable. So if we can get other stuns, as you can see here, Conqueror Lilius. Polidus, Briar Witch, Icera, which is what they're using, Para. So many good openers, boys. She'll most likely have, your opponent will most likely have a buff if we speed tune correctly. So overall, guys, before the artifact talk, very, very interesting kit. It just all kind of works together. I think the most unique thing is the Chains of Chiron back row attack. That might make her more than just an aggressive or cleaver style unit. But if you just want to run her aggressively, self attack up, 50% defense pen. Lots of stuns in combat readiness, and when she attacks any debuffed unit, she leads into a self-stealth extra damage move. So, very, very strong. Remember, she can skill 3. As long as she kills a unit, she can lead into skill 1, which can proc the extra dust. Um, what is it called? The dust attack. And then she'll get stealth to protect herself after that. So, if all things go according to plan, very, very smooth and powerful turn 1. You'll, you'll feel like you're doing so much. On top of that, we have the Chains of Chiron, which is always giving an effect to the the back row for two turns and i believe that's two turns period for the entire fight you can't reapply it right guys let me know what y'all think all right let's get the artifact real fast jacko symbol increases effectiveness of all allies by 10 percent um if the target has a debuff which she's going to want to be fighting she has some debuffs herself but you're probably going to want to be, be bringing openers with debuffs with her and uh that'll increase damage up to 24 percent which is kind of nice and since she is a warrior um for these kind of units warrior artifacts there's a lot of great ones right now, so Merciless Glutton um, is probably just going to straight up be very good for her. I believe Merciless Glutton is also single target attacks and gives his combat readiness push upon a kill. Um, I'll double check that and put it on the screen. But this seems like it's pretty good too as well, guys. And the fact that it already gives value on level 1 and no RNG proc effects, meaning there's no chance to apply it as long as you have to like max limit break it. Not a will artifact, going to be good even at plus 15. Not bad at all, and I think if you need the effectiveness, get this. Otherwise, there's probably other damage options that are potentially better, especially for combat readiness or more aggressive comps, all right? Like Glutton. But we'll see more when she comes out. We'll, we'll brainstorm a little bit more on that. Otherwise, the artifact seems solid. I would definitely pick one up because it is limited. Get at least one, and you don't really need to max it or worry about maxing it too much because it'll give straight-up damage always, and the, always the effectiveness. Okay. I think that's about it, guys. Looks pretty good. I'm not sure how much I'm going to make use of her, but I definitely want to try out, try out some Chains of Chiron comps for sure. All the cleavers out there, aggressive players, you're going to have a lot of fun killing a unit, applying that extra attack. And uh, she looks very good. Very waifu, right, boys? There is, by the way, the Jacko pose for my cultured viewers out there. Not that. Not her sitting in animation. If you slow it down during, I believe, the skill three, she looks like she almost does the Jacko pose. So get ready. All right, boys, there's Masha and Giggity. We'll skip through this real quick. They're just talking about the post. Damn, she looks, she looks so good. Uh, let's go look at the EEs real quick, real quick. Okay, so the new EEs will be for Elena. And we're going to be getting here. I'm going to get rid of that so we can read it together. Uh, the skill two, we have one that increases the combat rates by 15% or 5%, excuse me. And she gets effect resist as her uh, stat, which is pretty good. Skill three. Um, dispels one debuff before using Eternally Shining Comet. Now, this seems strong, guys, and it is good. It's better than what she has now. Obviously, it's it's a lot of just free stuff. But versus units that have a lot of debuffs, like say Para, for example, I think we won't. It won't be enough to stop the unbuffable. We're gonna get rid of the other debuff first, so be careful with that. Um, and then the other skill three decreases school down. I think the skill two or the first two are much better. Um, but overall, this is kind of nice. Elena was in a weird spot. This is I don't think this is going to make her like a must build just because of that if, you're, if you weren't using her already. But a lot of quality of life stuff. And it will be pretty good in some scenarios. And I hopefully the players that were already using her, she's going to feel a lot better in that regard. But 
Um, overall, kind of safe. Kind of safe. But potentially could be really good. All right. Let's hover on to the next one. Ray, who will be getting effect resist as well, which is really good for him too. He kind of struggled getting a lot of effect resist compared to some other soldiers that had some like built-in stuff. But that's good. Um... I don't like whenever units have the mono effect, meaning if all allies are X, this example being Earth, but it's good for PvE, very good for PvE. So that's maybe they're trying to force him into that role a little bit. Um, that seems strong if we're talking PvE, but I mean, maybe for some hard mode stuff like Abyss or those uh, Advent stuff. Skill 2 Ladder Rebirth, the amount recovered is increased by 15%. Always fine, I guess. And skill 3, increases defense of the caster for two turns when using very. That might be kind of nice for PvP. But overall, I don't think this is going to make him, with units like Kowaric out there, Amelia, if we're talking about Soul Weavers that just have more um, impact, I don't think this is going to make him viable for like endgame RTA, but I think this will make him much nicer for PvE. And those people that love Ray, um, EEs are always great. We get the effect resist, we get either increased healing, increased defense, uh, could be good, right? Overall, though, not I'm not too excited about that. Now, this one, guys, I think is kind of crazy. Watcher sure he's going to get more speed, so very good for the cleavers out there. Unfortunately, though, he's not like an opener, um, and he'll give speed imprint regardless of this EE or not. But this will maybe make tuning a little bit better uh, to make sure, right, we can sacrifice maybe a little more speed to get more damage. So speed is always good in, for a unit like this that's going to be run in very, very fast comps. Uh, as for the skills, quick fire looks really good. We get to decrease combat readiness of all enemies by 20%. However... I'm not a cleaver by any means, but from my impression, most matches are decided if you're using Watcher Shuri for RTA. Remember, well, RTA specifically. If we're talking about other modes, this could be way different. But for RTA, we're going to want a skill 3 with the Watcher Shuri to knock something out immediately. If he gets a turn and he gets a kill, usually by then, by the time you cycle into the skill 2 and he follows up with another attack, you've probably won by then. So in my opinion, although that seems very strong, that seems really good, um, an AOE 20% CR reduction. I think we're going to go for a skill 3 if we were min-maxing. But finishing shot, grant skill nullifier, always great. Now, be careful to overlap that because, like I said, in a cleave comp or in aggressive comps, you will be having other ways to give skill, skill nullifier. Let's say you're using, like, Faithless Lydica, for example, or some other... Uh, you have AOL. Who knows what you might have, but there's a lot of units now that grant skill nullifier, so we may not need that. And the skill 3 decreases skill cooldown. This one also, I feel like, is not necessary for RTA, but maybe for some arena comps. If you cycle a lot, the skill 2 and skill 3 could be better. I think skill the second one will be the best, though, for real-time arena. And I believe that's it for the E's, guys. So not too much to talk about. Um, nothing really that insane. Ray and Elena, pretty safe. The Watcher Shuri one, though, seems very good for PvP, right? 10 speed, insane, and then the skill 3... Always good to get buffs. Okay, anyways, let's wrap it up there, boys. I gotta make some other stuff too, but thank you so much for watching. I'm excited for Jackal. I'll make a separate uh, Guilty Gear kind of just all-encompassing guide soon. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely be pulling for her. You should do the same because she is limited. Um, and she might have some crazy potential with those Chains of Chiron stunts. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.